Christmas from Mark and Allie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And whether together or apart, our spirit is all united. And may you have the best of a happy, healthy new year. That's from Jerry and Karen Mayhew. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy new year from the Templeton family and the newest member scout. Merry Christmas from Mike and Doretta Newman. We miss being in church every Sunday morning. We are glad we can send this Christmas blessing. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Shooter family. May God bless you with peace and joy this holiday season. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Sarah and Will wishing you a Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. Merry Christmas from the Bazanas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. May God's joy and peace find you this Christmas season. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. From our family to yours. Happy birthday, Jesus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship. It is good to be gathering together in this way tonight. My name is Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor, and we are so glad that we are able to worship in this way tonight. Good evening and Merry Christmas to you. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville, and I pray that you are you're blessed tonight by this experience of witnessing and celebrating the birth of the Christ child. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, we also invite you to prepare your worship space wherever you are. We invite you to have bread or juice, crackers or grapes ready for communion later in the worship service. Have a candle with you, a source of light of some kind. We also invite you tonight, if you have a nativity scene in your home, to have that in view. Or for our little ones, perhaps the coloring sheet or stickers, we'll use those in prayer time later in the service. And now we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Every 
Tonight we light one candle for hope, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but hope just won't let go. Hope holds space for all our longings, lingers on the edge of harsh reality, like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, we whisper, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. We light one candle for peace, because the world is broken and the wait is long. But we refuse to be frozen by fear. Peace comes and fits and starts. A deep breath, a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, we whisper. The Lord comes to make the broken whole. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ with us. We light one candle for joy because the world is broken and the wait is long, but our joy cannot be contained. Joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighing with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, we whisper. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Tonight, we light one candle for love, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but love never ends. Love faithfully goes about the work of casting out fear, speaking truth, healing the deepest wounds, crossing the divide from this world to the next and back again. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Tonight we light one candle for Christ, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but Christ is with us through it all. In humble manger, a baby, on a cross, a king, in every heart and every home where hope, peace, joy, and love endure, Christ with us. Glory to God in the highest heaven, we whisper, and peace to all on earth. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Let us join our voices together in our call to worship. O oh, come, all ye faithful. Tonight, Tonight we, we gather, gather in the candlelight. O oh, come, all ye faithful. Tonight, Tonight we gather in prayer and joy. O oh, come, all ye faithful. Christ is with us. Now let us join our voices together in singing the Christmas hymn, O oh, come, all ye faithful.
exaltation. And now we invite you to join your voices once again to gather to truly know and hear with your mind's eye the voices of all those worshiping as we join together in this affirmation of faith. We gather on this night because we believe that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was a light of all people. Tonight we gather affirming that light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. The light shines. Tonight, on this Christmas Eve, we hold that affirmation in our hearts as we come into this time of prayer. As we light candles tonight and as we pray, we invite you to pray in whatever ways are most comfortable. You may want to light candles, or if you have a nativity nearby, you may want to have that within your gaze or even within your fingertips, or for our littlest ones, Perhaps they may want to be coloring our nativity as an act of prayer. And so we come into this time of prayer. On this night, we come as Mary and Joseph, travel weary but expectant, plans changed but hopeful and anticipating what lies ahead. This night, we come as the shepherds, startled from their work of tending and caretaking by angels' voices. Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people.
this night, we come as the wise men, still on our journey, waiting and watching for signs of light. This night we come as the angels did, bearing good news, good news in surprising places, in surprising ways, good news for all. This night, O oh Lord, we let your light enter our souls as we pray. And now let us join our voices together in singing, What Child Is This? Christ the King 
whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Tonight we hear the word of God from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. On this holy night, we pause. We pause again to hear anew these words. <clears throat> On this holy night, we pause together. We are pausing, coming from many different individual paths that have brought us here together. Different paths through these last several months of 2020 but also paths forged long ago, paths in our own individual journeys with God. And much like walking any path together, or a prayer labyrinth, if you're familiar with that circuit image of coming back around to the same places in the journey, much like walking any of those paths together, we may be, and likely are, stopped in different places along the way tonight. We're pausing in different places in the journey, places we've been before, perhaps, revisiting now. Some of us are feeling God close at hand. Others are paused in the wilderness, wandering. Others in the midst of that sense of distance from God and not knowing what comes next. And others of us pause someplace in between all of that. And some of the rest of us just longing for a little bit of light to light the next steps on the path. Tonight, we pause together, wherever we are, to, light the, to let the light shine on our paths. Well, the Gospel of John begins in a unique way. It begins all the way back at creation. Verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John's Gospel takes us back to a retelling of the creation story that we find in Genesis. And yet, this particular depiction of the creation story has new imagery. It gives us new ideas and new ways to see God. If we look at the beginning of our Bibles in Genesis chapter 1, the very first verses of the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. 
Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. We see this idea of the communion of God, the Creator, and God, the Holy Spirit, which was hovering over the water, and the dynamic Word of God, which we understand is Jesus, the creative force of God, comes through the Word. God speaks things into creation. And the Bible affirms that this idea that God is a trinity, that there are three in one, that, that existed from the, before the dawn of history, from the very beginning of all, of all things, God existed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so if we continue in John's Gospel, and chapter, or verse 3 says, All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. Speaking of Jesus, the Word of God. And then John affirms that Jesus is his creative work. The work of God is made possible through the Word. As God speaks things into existence, he is using the Jesus as the, the Word, the dynamic Word of God. He's affirming the divine nature of Jesus. John is in his gospel confirming that Jesus is a divine being, but also an integral part of God, that Jesus is God. When Jesus speaks, we're hearing the very heart of God, the word of God made flesh. So verse 4 says, What has come into being in him was life, and the life was a light of all people. As Genesis 1.27 says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. I love that text, don't you? I love that because it says human beings are all created in the image of God. No matter what you look like, where you're from, no matter what, you're in the image of God. And the breath of God, which is described throughout Scripture as the Holy Spirit, the very Ruach of God, the breath of God, enlivens all human beings. This is like the Spirit coming into us through the breath of God. And all people, regardless of their race or gender or ethnicity, or equally reflect the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I look in the mirror and I wonder about that sometimes. But I thank God for it. Amen. I thank God for that. We are created to be images of God, but also in communion with God and with one another. We are designed and created to be in communion with each other and with God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, the Gospel of John goes on in verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light's referring to Jesus as an expression of God's ultimate goodness through the examples that Jesus Christ laid out for us. Jesus is the light of the world. Coming into a dark world, he enlightens every corner of the world that will receive him. In fact, John actually uh, records Jesus saying this in chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus is speaking to the people, he says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's why we're celebrating this idea of Christmas Eve as the light. Because the light came into the world to chase away the darkness. And our purpose is to reflect that light, the light of Jesus Christ to the world, wherever we go. That we are to reflect that light of goodness and have the confidence and the assurance that darkness can never overcome it. The light of the world. The light was already in the world, already a part of the fabric of the life, that breath of life, that spirit that was breathed into all of creation. All of that was there because it came into being through the breath, through the light. And we know and we affirm this just as Scott has said. And yet, and yet, on this night, we also know that very human experience of knowing that the light and love of God is there, but just outside of our grasp, just outside of our vision. I know that many of us have been there, perhaps this year, perhaps before 
It's a human experience, one that we often come back and revisit. And so, knowing and loving this creation that God made, God became tangible. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory. The glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. That is what we celebrate tonight as we are paused on this path together, as we are paused not knowing where the paths lead. We are celebrating that God became tangible and graspable that out of God's love we might know that love so that even in those moments, or maybe especially in those moments, when the light and the love seems just outside our grasp, we know, we know that light and love is possible because the word became flesh and we have seen and are enabled to receive that glory. Amen. Well, that's the good news of Christmas, is it not? Amen. That the light came into the world and we celebrate this light each and every year. We celebrate the fact that God has loved us from the very beginning. In the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 1, verse 16, it reads, From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. However, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And as children of God, we experience God's grace even before we know that God exists. I really believe that's why Jesus said, let the little children come to me for such belong the kingdom of God because he knew that sometimes when we approach saying as a child, it's easier to understand. And yet, we too as adults or whatever age you might be as you're listening to this, that you understand that that grace is there for you. That God's grace is available for you. That God's grace is there in abundance. And that God's love and grace is there all the time. And Christmas reminds us that God sent his only son, Jesus, into our world to bring us the light. To help us to experience life. To walk among us. And to reveal the heart of God in each and everything he said and did. That we can see God through his, his uh, witness, through the things he did to show love and grace to each of us. And so we come today, or tonight, to worship God and experience God's grace anew. We have the pleasure now of hearing Megan Pennington sing Christmas Lullaby.
we now come to this table of grace. It is the place where God is made tangible to us in taste and sight. And so tonight, all are invited. We invite you to prepare your elements because this is the time when we acknowledge that we need God's help. And so tonight, as we acknowledge that, hear this good news. The light is in the world. Emmanuel, God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And now we have this joyful moment where we share the peace and light of Christ with each other, saying, the light of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thanks be to God. And as we do each Sunday here at First UMC, we invite you to put that in the comments to greet each other. The light of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was meeting in the upper room with his disciples. He is meeting there to celebrate the Passover, to have a feast with them, to celebrate the fact that God's love was with them forever and ever, back to the beginning of time, that God's grace overflowed for his people from before they even knew who God was. And we celebrate that grace tonight, this grace that comes to us. And Jesus gave a new lesson for his disciples that evening when he took off his outer robe and he washed their feet. And he says, I have a new commandment for you, to love one another as I have loved you. And he showed them what it truly means to love others by serving them and by showing them grace first. Tonight, we take our individual pieces of bread and cracker and we lift them high, trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring us together as one. And as we do the same with our cups, we take our individual cups, lifting them high, trusting in the power of God's Spirit and God's grace to bring us together as one. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice or crackers or grapes or whatever elements have been assembled before you, Lord, both on this table and on the altars of every home that is watching this worship service, that is participating in this time of worship. We pray that your Holy Spirit comes into them, that each and every person will experience the indwelling of Jesus Christ as they receive the the symbols of the body and the blood, and spiritually become, into, become Jesus within us. That as we go forth from this place, we can be the people that God calls us to be, to be the people of light, the people of goodness, the people of grace, and that we can continue to show that to others throughout the year and into the coming. These things we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, as children of God and disciples of the one who came to be with us, we pray these words together. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we feast with joy on this holy night. Christ's body broken that the many may become one. Take and eat with joy. Amen. In the same way, we take the cup representing the blood of Christ shed for many for the remission of sin and receive this into, our, into ourselves. We're truly receiving the spirit of Jesus Christ within our very bodies.
I hope in that moment that the love and the light, the incarnation of Jesus became real. Amen. And with thankful and joyful spirits, we pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, we give you give thanks, thanks for this, this holy mystery, mystery in which, which you have given yourself to us, to us one, one body gathered in you. Grant, grant that, that we, we may go, go into our days in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, now we sing this joyful, wonderful tune as we sing with the angels. Angels we have heard on high, and wherever you are, we invite you to stand and sing. some tidings be which inspire your heavenly song as a candlelight Christmas Eve as we do each year. We are preparing to light candles and so we invite you to find a candle, a source of light, <laughs> a flashlight, a cell phone, whatever it might be. Those of you who were here earlier this evening may have picked up a candle like this and we invite you to pick that up if you have one of those. Some of you may have lit that candle earlier tonight off of this Christ candle. And now we all prepare to take this light out. To take it out into the world. Not that Christ isn't already there, but to take our lights, to acknowledge that Christ is with us, to carry it out into the world. And so we leave this place, dispersing once again to be bearers of God's love and God's light. Thank you. 
light is shining my friends it can't go out even in the wind the light is shining it is growing and it is our job to go and shine